We started officially um, from in 1975. We started to be organized. We were going on before, and at one time, we all, before we name ourselves the regulars, we, we all used to meet at the corner of Battles and Blore, <clears throat> right opposite on the end. And in those days, there, there were few Trinidadians. Most of the, 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 the black people in Toronto at that time was Jamaicans. People used to say, say where are you from, Jamaica? So they used to ask a question and answer at the same time. So all Trinidadians, um, self like Papa Skeet, Avril, Jerry, Broomy, and a lot of other names that I'm not calling, we used to meet at the corner of Batterson Bluff every Saturday morning. And when we meet there, then we used to get together, and Papa Skeet will take his car and take the ladies from the line to Jutong and to different places to shop. And that is how we started, that is how we, we decided to, um, for us to get together and do this from an organized level. And the name that we came up with was the regulars because we were regular. We were always together, we were everywhere. And, um, and the name is so meaningful. Well, I've seen tremendous growth with the regulars. Number one, um, when we got together, we named ourselves the regulars. We started um, um, organizing special events, quality events, um, major entertainment events. We started by just giving parties at a place called, um, there was a house at 4 Euclid, Euclid and College. So, <clears throat> and then from there we have gone and we have always tried to be much better all the time along the way in terms of being one of the main, one of the main groups in the community, in the Trinidadian community and the Caribbean community. So we have come a long way. Most of the people today who are married and living together and have houses and have grandchildren and, and so on, they met at one of the regular parties at that time in the late 70s and, 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 and in the early 80s and so on. So I would say just by that alone, we have progressed a lot. We have come a long way. We have done a lot. We have provided the community with nice quality live entertainment, all different entertainment of such. Maintain the culture of Trinidad and Tobago, the music, the food, and so on. We still stay with the with the, 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 with, with the with the whole Trinidad culture. I think just based on that, we have come a long way in, in enhancing and, and, and of the upliftment of people in the community and keeping them together and keeping something going in the community that they can call their own. Obviously, there were a lot of other groups that started up and came out at, um, after long after that and started doing a lot of things, but that is part of growth. We are talking about men like Papa Skeet, Broomy, Much, uh, Murchison, Patsy, Agnes, Teresa, Avril, Jerry, um, oh my gosh, it, it, there's tons and tons, um, Ella, um, Marian, Gat, um, oh my gosh, um, Sandra, uh, there's so much. I mean, if I miss anybody, it's not that, I miss them intentionally, it's just people I can't remember right now, you know. You have people like Winston Maceo, who was, who was, who still is, who's one of the best song man in the community, he's a set up the song system everywhere. Um, it's Oaks, Oaks was, Oaks was one of the first DJ in, 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 in Toronto. Um, and he went back to Trinidad a long time ago. So, but there were so much people, and, and most of them, and most of them are still alive, 90% are still alive doing extremely well, have the houses, have the family, have the children, have the great grandchildren, some of them great grandchildren. And are around today, some of them living in Brampton, some live in, in Mississauga, Oshawa, all over the city of Toronto. Most of them we don't see each other as we used to before, but they're still there and doing extremely well. At this stage and at this point, um because of, because of all the trials and tribulations and all the challenges that we have been through and all the challenges that we had to meet and all the things that we have done. I personally, a lot, a lot of the, the original members are no longer around today. They are around, but not involved because um, most of them just can't be bothered. And you know, they, they, most of them now retire. They just want to take it easy and live life comfortable and be happy and so on. They will come whenever they feel like, but they, they can't make no commitment. So what I have done, I've come, I, I, I have managed to keep the name and the focus going. Um, we have a big responsibility now. We are, we are one of the major bands in the Caravan Parade. And my, my thing and our thing now is to cultivate a dynasty and to leave a foundation and to leave a legacy, mostly a foundation, so that the offspring of the regulars, if they want to continue doing what they're doing, there's a solid foundation there for them so they can just take this up and take it to the next level. This is our main interest right now, to leave a solid foundation for the offspring of the regulars. Well, one of the things that I do, one of the many things that I do, and to answer your question directly, 
um, I managed to keep in touch with the original regulars, with the regulars to try to keep in touch with their children and their grandchildren and trying to get them to be involved by talking to them. Some of them are showing the interest and some of them are not. That, that is one way. Then the next way, um, we have already started a relationship last year with Toronto Community Housing. So Toronto Community Housing have been working with the regular arts and cultural group and, and, and supplying us with the youths from the dancing area, the Morningside and Lawrence area, the Morningside and Kingston Road area. So what we do, we allow, provide them with an opportunity to come to the mass camp. We will show them how to design a costume, how to decorate a costume. And now we want to get that involved in, in teaching them and showing them how to play music, those who are involved in music, how to play the steel band, how to play pan. So that is the other way that we are keeping in direct contact with the youths of today, with the offspring of the regulars, those who are interested, and then keeping them involved culturally and creativity so that they could continue what we have started. If you do not market yourself and your product uh, efficiently and effectively, it will stay on the shelf, it won't go anywhere. So through constant marketing from a grassroots level, by continuously keep talking to the offsprings and the mothers and the fathers and letting them know that we still have this going and letting other people of the community know, for instance, like Canadians and Jamaicans and Vincentians and, and, and Canadian people, letting them know who the regulars are, where we are, what we are doing, and our intentions. We, get, we ma manage to do that through, I would say, uh, uh, the proper approach of marketing and advertising. That's the only way they can know, by efficient and effective marketing and advertising. One of the things that we would like to do when, when we reach on a certain level, or we could, we could start to do this all, all around, is, is to start to have what you call workshops in the different departments. For instance, we could, if you would bring someone from Trinidad like Peter Minchell, McFadden, or, or, or Stephen Derrick, or, or, or one of these leading um, um, costume and, and, and band leaders, costume or costume makers or band leaders from Trinidad, professional in the field. A man like Boogsy Sharp or one like Robert Greenwich or, or Joe Brown and, and hold workshop in teaching the younger ones to play pan, teaching the younger ones how to design and decorate costumes, teaching them how to manage a band because by today's standards in order for you to be successful in the cultural department of Trinidad and Tobago with the whole mass thing, you have to teach them every aspect of it. So teaching them how to manage the band because management is important, how you design a band, how you decorate costumes. And um, this is the way, this is the approach that I think that will go somewhere by you having constructive, organized workshops and networking and getting the younger ones involved and, and teaching them the history and the, the, the culture and the music and the food of, um, of Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. And through workshops, this is how I believe we'll get it through.